hello guys welcome to my youtube channel please if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please check the subscription button and hit the button thank you so on this video we are going to learn how to uh, find reaction that is determine the reactions at the support a and c to ensure equilibrium when a is equal to 30 degrees so this is actually equilibrium of uh rigid bodies so with this we are asked to determine the reaction at a and also at c so for us to solve this we need to have the free body diagram that is redrawing the free body diagram which will aid us to solve this question so let's start drawing our free body diagram that is i'm drawing our free body diagram so this length here is representing this length here uh okay so we have a which is a ruler so a is a ruler as you can see a is a ruler and the angle here is 30 degrees so we have a to be a ruler so we have a here now we'll indicate a ruler later but let's deal with the a b and c that is the external one after we come with the internal one so we have b c and uh, when you can see we have 300 newton acting at b and a distance of 0 0.2 meters and we have another 300 newton uh, force acting on top of b which has the same distance that is 0 0.2 uh, meters so at c now what i want us to do is for us to determine the reaction at c as you can see c is a hinge so with a hinge it has two forces acting that is it has the y component for that is the vertical force and the horizontal force acting at c so it means that we are going to get cx that is cx and cy because the reaction at c is a hinge so it will definitely have um two components which will be cx and cy so the reaction at c it's just for us to determine cy and also cx now when you come to reaction at a a is a ruler and it is rolling on at inclined angle of 30 degrees so we are going to draw that that is it's in inclined angle of 30 degrees that is 30 degrees when this is the angle that angle of inclination but normally we need to resolve this and use our mass ideas to uh, make sure that the force comes here so that we can resolve it in x and y component so you know that this is a ruler now note this when uh, a ruler is given to you let's do something like this so this is the angle so the angle is 30 degrees now make sure note that there will be a force that is passing through this that make 90 degrees with the ruler so actually you have a y acting top and a z acting okay this is a y acting top and a x acting down so this is the um the horizontal component and this is the vertical component so it means that let's extend this now the angle that i'm talking about is here you see this line note that when you have such question this line will be perpendicular so it will form 90 degrees angle here you should take note of that so when it forms 90 degrees angle here you're going to have the force acting here so this is the a force that is the force at a this is the force at a so this is what you are supposed to determine and when you determine this we are going to get the reaction at a which will be a y and a z so how do you find it we don't have this angle so what you're going to do here is you're going to bring the principle of that is mathematics so as you can see now if you extend this force downwards if you extend this force downwards that is downwards force it means that this side will be 90 degrees so if here is 90 degrees and here is 30 degrees automatically this angle here becomes 60 degrees and which is vertically opposite to this angle so if here is 60 degrees you know that this is 90 degrees so angle on a straight line sum up to 180 degrees so if this is 90 and this is 60 
automatically here becomes 30 degrees so here becomes 30 degrees and if here is 30 degrees now this is a 90 degrees angle here becomes what 60 degrees now so we have this force here so this is the force we need most to resolve the forces so as we're getting our force let's try resolving a force so we know that this is a so wait we know that ax that is resolving on on the uh, s component this is moving on a positive x so we get a cos 60 degrees and this is the angle we are using and ay will be a sine 60 degrees very simple as that because ay is here and a sine 60 degrees now let's continue so now we know we are we are going to create something that we can find a reaction so whatever you're going to do we do it so that we can find the reactions right so now for us to do that we need to take a moment at c because we are asked to find a reaction at what a and c so normally we need to get a x a y c x and c y so how do you that now you create a for uh, a movement around uh, a point with a lot of forces with c it has two forces so now we can create a movement at c and when you create a movement at c it means that the force at c all will be zero acting as c will be zero so you get this that is 300 newton times 0 0.4 meters now we are taking this to be anti-clockwise to be positive so anti-clockwise being positive so now this 300 newton let's take this 300 newton and it is moving to this c and it will move in this direction which is the anti-clockwise direction and the distance here as you can see here we have 0 0.2 i've, I've uh, converted it into uh meters so you get 0 0.2 meters and 0 0.2 meters so it means that you're going to get 0 0.4 meters as you can see so here you're going to get here to be 0 0.2 0 0.2 and when you add them you're going to get 0 0.4 that's why you have what this 0 0.4 here because you are moving we are talking about this force and it's moving at uh anti-clockwise direction to c and the distance from here it will be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 to give you 0 0.4 let's take this force when we take this for resolving it at c now we know that the force is 300 newton and it's moving in the the anti-clockwise direction which is positive and it is in a distance of 0 0.2 meters now let's go to this force we have this force moving here and that force moving here so as we resolve this this is a so we have a a resolving a so this is a we are resolving this a so a cos as you know that ax is now a cos 60 so we are replacing ax with what if you are finding ax this is ax here now we are replacing this ax with what a cos 60 as we've done it here you know that it's a cos 60 so a cos 60 times 0 0.4 meters it's moving in the what anti-clockwise direction because it's moving on this line and when it comes here it's like the previous one that we did here so it's going to move in the 0 0.4 meters direction so you are going to get this and when you move to the ay you know that ay is what a sine 60 degrees so it's moving in the clockwise direction to c which will be negative a sine 60 degrees times and the distance is 0 0.8 as you can see here is 0 0.8 meters you can see from here 0 0.8 meters as simple as that so when it moves it's move a distance of 0 0.8 meters so when you do that the correct way you're going to get 180 newton meter plus a times 0 0.8928 meters is equal to zero so when you do that the correct way we get our a which is our force to be 365.25 newton so now after getting the force this is not the reaction the reaction is a x and a y so you're going to place this a into the equation that is a x is a cos 60 so when you do that you know that a x is what 365.245 newton cos 60 which will give you 182 point so you get 182.623 newton so that is reaction at a x and when you do a reaction at a y you're going to get 365.25 newton sine 60 which will give you ay giving you 316.31 newton so now we've gotten our reaction at a correctly so this is our reaction at a yes
and please i i want us to be very interactive if you don't understand anything please the comment box is there please comment so that i can reply you thank you very much so now let's move on with we are now we are done with this reaction at ax and ay so now let's go to c how do you find c so we are going to resolve the forces in x and y component using um equilibrium so the sum of forces in s components will be equal to zero which will give you 300 newton this is moving in opposite uh, positive x component positive x component and the cs is also moving the positive x component and ax is positive x component so you're going to get 300 newton plus 300 newton plus 182.623 newton plus cx is equal to zero but we are finding cx so we are going to send all this to that place which will give you cs giving you negative 782.623 newton but you know that this is negative it means that with cx this direction needs to move in the opposite direction so it means that the cx the cx is going to move in the opposite direction yes to oppose this direction that's it so the negative is just showing the uh, the direction that the cs should move so now let's move on to um uh, the cy so the cy we are going to find the sum of uh forces at the y component that is forces acting at y component should be equal to zero so with that one you're going to do it so you know that it is a y um you get c y plus a y what's a y a y is positive and c y is positive which will be equal to zero but as you know we've gotten our a y already here which is 316.31 newton so you're going to insert it inside so it means that we're going to get c y plus 316.31 newton should be equal to zero and that will give you cy giving you negative 316.31 newton so it means that this also is negative it means that this sign too needs to change